Carlo Gozzi was born in Venice in 1720, and he hardly left Venice until he died in 1806. He was very interested in uh, theater um, and thinking about how theater should convey its feelings to the audience and how actors would perform and what playwrights uh, had to do and had to write. Um, he was engaged in a polemic with two of his contemporaries about theater, the abbot Pietro Chiari, who was writing tragedies, and Carlo Goldoni, who wrote comedies. And at first he engaged this polemic uh, with tracts and poems, um, but then he decided he wanted to reach a wider audience, and it is for that purpose that he wrote his first play, The Love of the Three Oranges, in 1761. He um, decided to have it staged by a very successful uh, theater troupe in Venice, uh, the one led by Antonio Sacchi, who was a very successful Truffaldino. And Carlo Gozzi was proven right in his decision to write a play in order to enter into this diatribe because a play, and a successful play at, at that, was uh, able to reach a far wider audience than any poem or any tract that he could have possibly written. The Love of the Three Oranges is particularly significant in the scope of the history of theater, and not just Italian theater, because we usually think of Western theater as being created or being conceived in the form that we call it now theater by Commedia dell'arte people. Commedia dell'arte performers were the first professional performers, and what these people did was actually specialize, became professional actors. The interesting thing is that we, scholars refer to Commedia dell'arte as a phenomenon that ruled over Italy, Northern Italy, Central Italy, Southern Italy, and Southern Europe into England from about 1570 to about 1620 or 30. And then there we are in the second half of the 18th century, and we have a diatribe concerning how actors are supposed to perform. Carlo Goldoni wanted, as a playwright, to have full control over each word that the actors would say. Carlo Gozzi, on the other hand, wanted to have what we call a canovaccio, a canvas, an outline of the script, and fill it with the sketches, the physical comedy that the actors had memorized and could combine um, according to the responses of the audience. Godzi and Saki were on the conservative end of the spectrum in this polemic about how to write plays, and ultimately they were also on the losing side, because when we go see a play, we hear pretty closely to the words that the playwright wrote. Whereas if you look at the text of The Love of the Three Oranges, it's essentially a description of what is supposed to happen on stage. From our standpoint then, we could easily dismiss The Love of the Three Oranges as a blast from the past. But um, it is not that, it is way more than that. It brings to bear in the 18th century a fable or a story, a fairy tale, that we would tell our kids, and that also would have great traction with the audiences in the 18th century. It also is very important that this takes place in Venice, because Venice is the first town in Italy and one of the first towns in Europe to have what we would call theater for hire, i.e. purpose-built spaces that an investor would build and then rent out to traveling troops or to troops in the city for the duration of the season. This is essentially what we're accustomed to seeing on Broadway or on the West End in London, but at the time when this happened, this was absolutely brand new. And in Venice also, investors would differentiate the purpose-built theaters for plays and purpose-built theaters for operas, then making a big difference in how our opera houses and our traditional uh, playhouses look. Because The Love of the Three Oranges is not in fully scripted form, it is essentially very difficult to reconstruct its performance history. But um, most recently in the theater season 2002-2003, the Teatro Stabile del Veneto, which is housed in Venice, uh, performed a fully scripted um, version that was penned by a famous contemporary Italian poet, Edoardo Sanguinetti. A few years ago, when I saw that the Playground Theater was going to stage The Love of the Three Oranges, I was totally intrigued by the idea because 
Well, there's no script there. So my first question to you, Stephanie, was how did you develop it? Well, first, I read as many adaptations as I could find, as many scripts of the play as I could find. That's where I started. And I knew that there was something in this play and the story that I really wanted to explore, but I wasn't happy with the scripts. So I found the most bare bones translation I could find, and I used that as a starting point with the actors. And we actually used improvisation mm. around the scenario to create our own script. So how long did the process take? Working with the actors was eight weeks, which included rehearsal, developing the script, technical rehearsal, everything, until we performed. And then as we kept performing, we kept refining the script. And so now, right now, you have an actual physical yes. script that you're going to reprise line by line. Yes, we have an actual line. copywritten script. But the nature of the show, because we rehearse so much with improvisation, the actors are really infused with that spirit, and they do add things in the moment you know, that are inspired by the audience, which is great. And sometimes I have to rein them back, and sometimes it's genius, and it gets into the script. So. Are you going to reprise it with the exact same cast? Well, we haven't done the show in about three years, so right. we will have three new actors. Three mm -hmm. out of the seven will be new actors. Okay. And we're also creating brand new music. I see. So you, you're going to have to bring these three new actors into mm -hmm. this culture yes, that exactly. the original troupe had. You're right. And we're, we call this our recession production <laughs> because we're using existing sets and costumes, but we're commissioning new music. That's good. We have three new actors, so it's new. And there right. are plenty of audience members who haven't seen The Love of Three Oranges yet. Right. There is a new crop of kids, families who haven't heard of the theater, so it's good. Right, yes. My, my son was too young when you did it. He's now five. He can Perfect. obviously see it, and he'll be six by the time you do Target it. Target audience. So how do you make it relevant? to contemporary children, or to contemporary audiences, period. Because as I read the script, it seems very 18th century. It's very steeped in the diatribe. But that's boring. Well, it's interesting because one thing you touched upon is how Gotzi reinvested in fairy tales. Mm -hmm. And he was using fairy tales to recapture audiences and audiences' imaginations mm. and emotions. So since we're making shows for young audiences and their families, fairy tales are perfect material for that. So we dug into the fairy tale and the fantasy and the supernatural elements. In terms of the political diatribes mm -hmm. and literary debates right. that are prevalent in the scenario, those we cut away, but found a way to have that spirit. For example, there's the wizard Celio, who's supposedly the good wizard, mm -hmm. and then the evil witch, Fata Morgana. Mm -hmm. And we gave them dueling musical styles. I see. So Celio is more flute and winds mm -hmm. and bell, and Fata Morgana is percussion, drums, darker. Right. And uh, since this is about the process, I'm, I like to share that. We did have one scene that got cut that was actually a musical duel ah. between the two, with the wizard and the witch. Oh, wow. But the play got too long, we had to cut it. Too bad. But that was, that was a direct translation, if you will, of the literary debate. So in terms of costumes, in terms of music even, where do you situate it um, chronologically? Or is it in a indistinguishable fairy tale kind of time and land? It's definitely a mixture. Um, working with, this, with the designer, we wanted the feeling of a troupe. Mm -hmm. We wanted to keep that Commedia dell'arte troupe mm -hmm. of actors, sort of a traveling troupe, and the actors creating music. Mm -hmm. There is recorded music, but the actors themselves create music, play drums, play percussion. 